learning outcomes for our students, to make sure that we're engaging students from all groups, um, and that we have equitable and inclusive learning opportunities and learning environments for all of our students. So um, I think that that's really a spirit that pervades throughout the department. You'll see lots of initiatives in the department that focus on equity and inclusion and enhancing um, teaching both for the faculty, but also among students, engaging students in peer instruction and peer led learning. Sometimes the best way to learn something is to teach it to others. And that's something that we hope that you'll join in and be a part of in our department. We offer lots of different types of degrees. So um, there's no one singular definition of what is computer and information sciences. There are many different paths to many different possible careers in computing. Um, some different paths emphasize more uh, creativity and working with people. Others uh, emphasize more um, sort of systems and infrastructure building. Some emphasize looking at large data sets to solve really challenging problems across a number of different disciplines. And you see that reflected in our degree programs. We have a degree program in computer science. Um, again, that's more focused on uh, the infrastructure building. So if you wanted to be a software engineer at say Google or, or Facebook, that might be the degree path that you're pursuing. For information science and technology, uh, that's a degree program that emphasizes collaboration with people and understanding requirements and looking at user interfaces and designing systems that suit the needs of people and solve problems. Uh, we also have some interdisciplinary programs, computer science plus mathematics, as well as computer science plus physics. And we also have three different flavors of data science, depending on how you want to address uh, and, and apply data science concepts uh, across different disciplines. We have computational data science. We have a, a flavor of data science that emphasizes more uh, sort of application to bio uh, and, and biomedical applications. So lots of different ways that you can kind of get engaged. The other nice thing that I'll tell you about our department and CST, and I'm sure Lawrence and other students, uh, Lawrence is an advisor, uh, and the students on the panel can tell you that you don't always know from the jump what is going to be your path. And one of the things that is nice about these degree options is that it gives you flexibility to change over time as you find out what you're really passionate about and what aligns with your career interests as you learn more about computer and information sciences. Our department's also the home of two research centers. Temple is a research university, which means we have a lot of faculty engaged in really pushing the boundaries of what is possible in computer and information sciences. And that means that you get to learn from people who are experts in their field and you get to get engaged in undergraduate research with them. Uh, we have two centers for research in our department, which kind of highlight what we're really focused on and have a lot of activity around. One is the Center for Data Analytics and Biomedical Informatics. And the other, other is the Center for Networked Computing. So these are two um, areas of research where there's lots of research activity, but there are many other projects, including in machine learning, computer vision, uh, data science, and pervasive and mobile computing. So lots of opportunities for you there. And Danielle, we can go on to the next slide. Um, Rose, should I talk about this or do you want to talk a little bit about Okay, so let me tell you about some of the opportunities that we offer to students um, in terms of programs and initiatives. Uh, we are really uh, focused on, as I mentioned before, providing equitable and inclusive opportunities to all students. And we try to propagate that by building an inclusive student community and providing uh, opportunities for students to learn and engage with each other uh, at our institution, but also beyond our institution. Uh, to develop that community around the, the guiding principles of diversity, ex equity, and inclusion in computing, and also to build your network so that you can meet other professionals uh, that you identify with that can help you with that transition eventually from college into career. So uh, we do that through a number of different ways. We engage with the National Center for Women in Information Technology, NCWIT, which is a national alliance which promotes the um, recruitment and retention of women in the information technology field. 
Uh, we recently received an award within the department to create a strategic plan to emphasize the recruitment and retention and advancement of women in computing. Uh, we also each year send cohorts of students to diversity focused conferences. It's a really amazing opportunity. We, we provide scholarships for students to attend. We have meetings where we meet as a cohort to prepare for the trip. And we go and we learn together, we meet others and we come back energized and ready to put plans into action to really uh, enhance that community within our own department. So one conference that maybe you've heard of is the Grace Hopper Celebration of Women in Computing. So over 25,000 women in computing convene at this conference. And it's really an amazing feeling to look around the room and see a bunch of creative, bright, ambitious, technical women uh, ready to sort of tackle the world and solve uh, the problems of the future. So um, each year we take a group of our students and a company uh, them at this conference and come back and discuss what we've learned. We also take a cohort of students to the ACM Richard Tapia Celebration of Diversity in Computing Conference. And that conference uh, focuses on supporting African American and Black students, Hispanic and Latinx students, uh, Pacific Islander students, students with disabilities, as well as women in computing, all of whom are underrepresented. Uh, and, and often have been excluded in computing. And this conference focuses on, uh, again, building community, uh, devising strategies, um, and, and understanding how to uh, address diversity, equity, and inclusion in our department and in our careers. So these are some of the, the ways that we're trying to build community in our department. Uh, again, we'd love for you to participate. So we hope that you'll join us at Temple and think about uh, being a part of this cohort and these communities. Next slide. And I'm going to turn it over to Rose now, who's going to tell you a little bit more about how we build community within our department and offer opportunities to students. Uh, thanks, Dr. Payton. Um, you know, the most important thing that we often talk about in our department is that we want everyone to feel part of our department and be engaged in something they enjoy, right? There's no one size fits all for everybody. So what we have worked really hard on with our students, because really the vast majority of the work is done by our students, is create um, student organizations and clubs that foster student interest and that give students an opportunity to find a place of belonging and to be able to grow and expand and learn outside of the classroom, which is just really the best college experience. Um, on today also is Claudia, uh, Claudia uh, Pine-Simon. Claudia has been working with the Association for Computing Machinery and the Association for Computing Machinery for Women. This is a very large organization and a very active organization within our department. It works with students on lots of different initiatives, including professional development, growth, training opportunities, and fun. <laughs> they do a lot of fun things too. They also work in the local community with opportunities with organizations like Tech Girls and uh, in working with uh, getting students in the middle schools to understand what we do and what their careers could be and what a career in technology um, would look like for them. Sorry about my dog dinner time. Um, the second organization that we have is an organization called TU Dev. Um, that is really an organization of hackers and makers. And these students get together to learn new technical initiatives and to work on cool technical projects. They have seminars, they have events. And most important, all of these student orgs work together, right? They don't work in isolation with each other. We also have the STARS Computing Corps. And those students really are amazing. They go back into the local North Philadelphia community to help with um, teaching and guiding um, high school and middle school students in the uh, various technologies and learning in the high school. Because as you may know, not all schools have opportunities for computer science education. And they work with the teachers and the students um, in those communities, which is really great. And our most recent new student organization is the Temple Data Science Community. Um, this is a community of already over 50 students who've gotten together in data science 
uh, interest across the university, not just within the CIS department, because as Dr. Payton said, data science crosses many things. And they've already started working on research projects on um, uh, hacking and projects and code and alliances and groups and all kinds of really cool events. So um, there's a great way to participate in the department, to find a place where you belong, to really give back, um, to have social engagement. And uh, you know, hopefully one of these student organizations, along with many of the many, many other student organizations that Temple has, will be a good fit and a good home for you when you join us in September. Danny, I'll turn it over to you. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Payton and Rose. Um, those were such great overviews and got me very excited about the different programs that we offer. Um, so now we're gonna change things up. Um, we are going to open to a Q&A panel. So when you registered for this event, you sent in some great questions that I will definitely be asking, but I encourage you to use the chat feature in case you know you hear anything tonight and you want to ask a question about that and interact with us. So as I said, you can either use the chat feature to ask a question or you can ask to be unmuted and I'll be happy to uh, let you speak freely. So for our panelists tonight, I'm gonna um, read off the panel real quick and then I will finish sharing my screen and all of you can give a brief introduction about yourself. But so you just heard from Dr. Jamie Payton, who's the chair and who is the chair of the department and an associate professor. Uh, Rose McGinnis, who is a professor, director of student professional development and director of data science programs. Um, we also have um, Professor Claudia Pine-Simon and Claudia is, um, as Rose mentioned, she's a faculty advisor of a couple of our student orgs, um, which is really exciting to have her on this call. And she also is involved with Grace Hopper, as you saw in that photo there. And then we have um, Lawrence, who is one of our amazing academic advisors who works with students in the computer and information sciences department, math and physics. So he can answer any questions related to advising, orientation, next steps. Um, and then the, our, um, some of our star students and alum, yes, I called you star students. Um, we have Elizabeth DiCarlo, who is an um, information science technology major. We have Dossie, who is a math and computer science major. Rose, uh, not Rose McGinnis, Rose Keenan, who is an ISNT major. Wilson, who is an ISNT major. He's also one of my student ambassadors. So um, he gives tours on campus when that's a thing. Um, and then we have a recent alum, Jose, um, who just began his uh, career at Wells Fargo. So I'm going to unshare my screen so we can see all of your lovely faces. And then I'm just gonna ask if the panelists would mind just sharing a really brief background um, on you. So for um, Lawrence, if you wanna talk about, you know, what kind of resources advising provides, um, Claud uh, Claudia, if you wanna talk about some of the courses that you teach, and then Wilson, we'll have you kick it off for the students since you're super familiar with this, because um, I make you do this all the time and we'll kind of go um, around the table that way. So we'll do Lawrence, Claudia, then Wilson, and so on. Great, thanks, Danny. Uh, so, hi everyone. My name is Lawrence Mahoney Jones. I am an academic advisor in the College of Science and Technology. As Danny said, I specifically work with computer information science, math and physics upperclassmen. So what is advising? People, uh, when you come to college, there's a lot of new different things. This can be really, really uh, intimidating, um, but that's really where, what my job is and, and where I come in. Um, as an academic advisor, our job is to really assist you along your academic uh, journey through Temple University. So uh, we, at NCST specifically, the College of Science Technology, we have teams. So um, there's a team of first year advisors that would work with you uh, during orientation and through your first year in CST. And then once you are a sophomore and then moving on from that point, you would work with uh, me. And, uh, and again, some of the things that you come to an advisor for usually, so in the beginning, we will give you a, a set of courses to take. Um, and then moving forward, we, we help you and can guide you through what courses to take each semester if you're not sure. Um, I know me personally, I didn't use my advisor much. I was pretty good at using the resources because I was, I was taught that at orientation. And so 
if you know how to use those resources, we know how to, we will show you how to use those resources and what those resources are. There's plenty of them to, to go through. I won't go through them right now, but uh, there's a lot of resources that you can use to pick courses. Um, in addition, if you have any questions about your academic progress, about going through, um, uh, uh, about uh, joining clubs, organizations, about needing help financially, we, we can at least show you where to go. We might not have all the answers, um, especially if they're not exactly academic, but I mean, Rose, uh, Rose uh, McGinnis can tell you, we, we were neighbors at, and in the office and we're in person and, and we always vibed off each other in terms of using information. And so really we're just your guide in, or, in order to make it through this uh, crazy thing called college. Great, thank you. All right, Claudia, if you just wanna share a little bit about um, any classes that you teach, um, that would be really helpful. Oops, you gotta unmute real quick. <laughs> Hi, I teach uh, computer architecture, operating systems and networking and also network architecture. I got into this uh, a little bit late um, in my life, I did not major in computer science. I went back to school because I saw computer science as empowering. And I think that why I love teaching and it energizes me so much is because I see that I can empower students to empower the world. And that's how I view um, the whole department. And I think it's very exciting. And I think going to Grace Hopper, which I I'm usually the person who um, accompanies the uh, girls, it is the most transformative experience that you can ever imagine. Um, and it'll be in Chicago this year. I thought I'd get a plug in here. Um, and I'm very excited. And it's not just, it's just seeing 25 to 30,000 women, successful women, and they taught. And what's really remarkable is that these very high profile, famous women talk to talk to you, you know, like you're equal. It's the most, as I said, it's a transformative experience uh, because it empowers it empowers women, it empowers anybody who in uh, uh, attends. And I just think that this uh, all of computer science is the most exciting and energizing. Uh, discipline. And for those of you, I welcome you and I can't wait to meet all of you. And as I said, I'm involved in the clubs too, which again is just wonderful. We get involved in a lot of um, uh, STEM initiatives um, and uh, we do all kinds of things. There's professional, academic. We had uh, one of our professors gave uh, the most remarkable um, uh, talk on data science. It was just, he was so engaging. So there are all different kinds of things. We also are involved in fun stuff and social stuff. Uh, so there's so much opportunity uh, for everyone um, and for inclusion and diversity. It's really, it's just remarkable and amazing. I think that's all I have to say. It was, I hope it what didn't perfect. take too long. <laughs> no, that was perfect. Okay, so like I said, Wilson's gonna start, but for all the students, um, and then um, alum Jose, if you could just share your name, your major, your hometown, and then um, anything that you're involved in uh, related to CIS, whether that's research internships or um, organizations. So we'll go to Wilson first. Hi everyone, uh, thanks for joining us tonight. My name is Wilson. I'm a senior ISNT major. Um, on campus, I've been doing undergraduate research for two semesters in the Center for Data Analytics and Bioinformatics. Uh, I've been the TA for our databases and major course for a couple semesters, and I had a software development internship this past summer with Cigna in the city. And I'm originally from Northeast Philly, and I used to commute when I was still going to campus. And Wilson's not bragging about himself, so I will, but he already has received a full-time job offer that he accepted from Cigna following his internship. So yay for Wilson. <laughs> okay, Dossie, do you wanna go next? Sure, um, I am a freshman majoring in computer science and math. And I am hopefully going to get a certificate in cybersecurity as well as music technology for my own joy. Um, and I'm hoping to do some research over the summer, but as I am just a freshman, I still don't know a lot about anything. Um, but I have joined clubs and I am um, secret like secretary in training for ACMW. Um, and I am membership officer for STARS, computing cores, and um, junior officer for ACM. 
So everyone has been so inviting and welcoming, and I'm really excited to get back on campus. Um, I'm also from Northeast Philly, but I don't live there anymore. I'm like 15 minutes away, um, and I will be commuting to Temple once we start again. So, Thanks, Dossie. It's going to be really helpful to have you on the panel so you can give a perspective of what it's like to, to just start at Temple. So I'm really, really happy that you're here. Okay, let's go down to Elizabeth next. Hello, um, my name is Elizabeth. I am a junior ISNT major. Um, on campus, I am also involved in STARS, um, and I also was lucky enough to be able to go to the Grace Hopper Conference this most recent fall. It was virtual, but it was still um, a really great experience, and I would recommend it to anyone in this field. Um, and I also live in an off-campus apartment, uh, if anyone has questions about something like that. Great, we'll do uh, Rose next, Rose Keenan. Hi, I'm Rose, and I'm a senior studying ISNT, graduating this fall, so not May. Um, I'm currently a STAR intern at SAP America, and that is a rotational program for two years, and um, you get to work with two or more teams um, at SAP, so it's been really great. And you work um, full-time in the summer and part-time uh, during the school year. I've also worked with Stepping Stone Scholars, and um, shout out to Rose McGinnis for always sending so many emails because it was one of the positions on the listserv um, and it was a really great experience. I got to teach um, Philadelphia high school students for one month teaching them Java and then I also uh, was an undergraduate research student um, with the URP program and I worked with that for two semesters and I continue and I'm um, planning to continue uh, during the summer, just as something that I want to do to continue the project. Um, I was born and raised in Philly, in Northwest Philly, and I recently moved to um, West Mount Airy in an apartment, and I'll be commuting for my last semester. Man, you all should, should really get some hobbies. It doesn't sound like you do enough. <laughs> all right, and then last but not least, Jose, we'd love to hear uh, about you. Hey guys, my name is Jose. I am a recent uh, graduate from the uh, IST department. Um, I graduated in December. Um, uh, during uh, my time attending Temple, um, I also commuted. Uh, I stem from the North Philadelphia area. So Temple University was just a couple blocks away. Um, easy commute for me. And um, during my time um, being a student, I was also a part-time worker. And, um, and yeah, I'll get into a little bit more into uh, my story um, as we go. Okay, great. Okay, so now we are going to open up to questions. So I can start with a question uh, that we received when you registered for the event. But as I said, we'd love to hear what you're thinking now, um, if there are any questions that you have for the students. So, um, so I heard that Rose and Wilson both had internships and Elizabeth, did you have one as well? And Elizabeth did too. So yep, and I have an upcoming one as well. Awesome. Well, one of the questions that we received was how much did the university give help you in finding internship opportunities? So if any of, how about the three of you just tell us how you each secured your internship and then why don't you just give us a little taste of what you did during your internship. So um, whoever wants to go first, that'd be great. I can start. Sorry, we'll see. <laughs> Um, so I have an upcoming internship this summer with Deloitte um, down in Washington, D.C., and um, it's not from the area. They do come to our career fair, which is basically when a bunch of companies are able to come. It's a few hours on a Friday in the spring and in the fall, and you're able to just, you know, tell them a little bit about yourself, but also learn about them and what they have to offer for full time jobs or internships. So it's a great way to meet companies and put your name out there. Um, so I initially met them through that, and then I talked to them again at Grace Hopper. Um, and then through that, I was able to talk to the company and then just apply uh, through Handshake, which is like an online networking website, um, which is popular in our field, I think. And um, through that, I was, that's how I was able to secure the website, the internship. But there were a lot of people at Temple, you know, through advisors, mentors, professors that kind of help um, guide you with what you might enjoy and also can make connections for you with different companies. Awesome, thanks. Wilson, did you wanna go next? Sure, I can 
kind of elaborate on that. Um, also, my friend Ryan's going to go work for Deloitte this summer, so maybe you'll meet him. Uh, he's in my capstone group this year. But yeah, the uh, the way I got my internship was speaking to a Cigna recruiter at our job fair, uh, where you know over 75 employers come every semester and look specifically for CST students. So they want, a lot of them look for computer science, ISNT students, also for biology students and things like that. But um, it's really hard to get your application across your resume to get seen if you're just applying blindly to like some system and you're just uploading it. So getting to meet face-to-face -face with all these recruiters that really want to hire Temple students is really great um, to make that personal connection. Rose McGinnis, as Rose Keenan says, she sends out a lot of emails all the time with all these opportunities we can sign up for and apply to, as well as she hosts a lot of professional development um, workshops and things like that. Lots of employer meetups, which is really good. Thanks, Wilson. And then Rose, do you just want to share if you have anything to add? And then why don't you just talk about what you do at your internship? Sure. So just to piggyback everyone else, um, CST always really supports and guides their students. So with Rose McGinnis's emails, um, they're weekly and they cover such a wide range of opportunity um, in terms of full-time, um, part-time internship and just learning experiences. So I would definitely um, always keep an eye, eye out for that. Also our handshake is how I applied to SAP. And through that, I went through an application process and an interview process. So I was just always keeping up to date with um, any emails or updates from SAP. And um, it was really a good experience to always stay on track with what was happening. Um, I would also recommend to apply to as many places as you can. Um, even if you think that you won't or you're unqualified for some reason, it's always best to apply because most times it's just imposter syndrome and you're just feeling like there's people smarter than you, but you're more than capable to carry out these internships. You're more than capable of getting them. Um, I would also recommend, as everyone else did, to go to the career fairs. So show in your face, even if you're super nervous and you feel like it won't make a difference, it really, really does. And um, the recruiters love seeing you and there's Temple alum that are there to support you and to help you um, feel better about being in this crazy space with like all these other sweaty students <laughs> who are also just as nervous as you. So I would definitely recommend going to those once we have them up and we have been having them virtually as well. And at SAP, what I do, um, I had my first technical rotation um, this summer and it was completely virtual and I was working on a team in the center of expertise, working with um, one of SAP's products for automation. And um, I was also, of course, as an intern, you have to be involved with the program you're working with. So uh, I was very involved with the STAR program and the other STAR interns. We have a few at Temple right now, and they're all great. And they made you feel very welcome at SAP, even though it's virtual. And now as I continue with SAP, I'm working on the talent development team, which is a non-technical team, working on creating curriculum for early talent. So um, who I was uh, coming into SAP, we're working on curriculum for getting everyone set up and to understand the products. Very cool, that sounds now, awesome. Jose, Jose, when you were at Temple, you also had a really cool internship, which was a developmental internship, which I think made a big difference too, right? So no, I know for, for myself, um, I applied um, for, for this one company and um, I wasn't quite able to obtain it, but they told me out of 115 applicants, I was top five, but um, I don't wanna uh, diminish that, that there are opportunities all around and you know, you just can't be scared to, to, to apply for these opportunities and, and you know, just, just uh, connecting with a few roles, you gave me a lot of alley-oops, a lot of opportunity has fallen in my lap and um, it's definitely there, it's definitely there. So, yeah. Could I just add something also, ACM has professional meetings where a lot of these companies come and talk and then meet individually with the students. And I'm gonna tell, Rose knows the story, we had Lockheed Martin there and they hired on the spot, they actually did interviews right on the spot and they hired 
uh, 22 altogether between internships and jobs right on the spot, right from the ACM meeting. So there's plenty yeah. of opportunity and support um, you know, for uh, future careers and internships. Yes, I they came. They they came one evening at five o'clock. We started at five. We <laughs> yes. had we had uh, ten or fifteen pizzas, and Claudia and I left at around ten thirty when they had Not finally made, made a decision on yeah eleven o'clock when they had made decisions on twenty two interns that night. Sounds like it was worth it. <laughs> oh, we did not complain. <laughs> no, <laughs> we had plenty of pizza. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Um, so thanks for sharing that. My next question is actually for Dossie. So um, as a first year student and you're a math and computer science major, which is really cool, but I'm not sure that a lot of the students, number one, knew that we even had that option and number two would know exactly what to do with that. So how did you go about uh, picking your major? Um, so originally I was a computer science major because my brother had graduated from Temple and he was an ISNT major. So I was debating whether to do ISNT <laughs> or computer science. I chose to do computer science. And then um, and then I, I, I don't know, I've always had a passion for math. And so I really wanted to explore both of them. And I still don't know like what my ultimate um, degree will be. But for now, I am, I'm pursuing my passion in both computer science and math. And I'm hoping to um, see the overlap and, you know, really get the best out of both worlds. So yeah, I, I did reach out to my advisors and I asked them what would be the best um, route for me, route for me to go. And they did recommend like computer science and math. So, and they were very free, willing to change my major like automatically. So that was nice. So Danny, Claudia just made the connection of who her brother is. <laughs> Cause we knew, we knew him very well too. Yeah. And helped him get yeah, a job. Yeah. I just sent you a chat to say, give him a big hello for me. Yeah. <laughs> and he says hi too. <laughs> I'm sure he would. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, yeah, thanks for sharing that, Dossie. And something that I want to touch on is the fact that um, something that I think that is great um, about the CIS program is that a lot of the um, courses that you take within the first couple semesters or first two or so between the different majors that they offer are very, very similar. So if you change your, if you know, if you come in as computer science and then you take a couple classes, talk to your advisor, talk to your professors and think, you know, maybe ISNT is better. Or maybe math and computer science is better. You can easily switch because everyone has to take those foundational, um, you know, fundamental computing courses. So you're not going to be behind. Did you want to add something, Lawrence? I see you. Unmute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did want to add something. Um, so, and and something that Dasi said really stuck with me that I want students to y'all to understand is that it's okay to not know what you want to do yet. Go off your passions. If you are passionate in this field and you and and you love to technology and you want to learn programming, you, you don't even need to know programming. And and I've seen so many students who come in who have no programming experience and they come through this major, these majors and they're successful because they put in the hard work. So, um, and, 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 and like Dossie and Danny said, we are here to, to help you navigate those things as, as, as advisors. So if you're not quite sure what you wanna do and, and but you know, like I really like math or I like programming, but I think I wanna do a little more than just programming we can guide you in the right directions. Yeah, thank you, Lawrence. I really appreciate that perspective. Um, that was something that I wanted to say too about not having a uh, computing background. So, so that's really great. Um, now, something that Wilson kind of teased in what he said that I'd love for you to touch on. And then Rose, you might have to jump in here too, but um, you mentioned a capstone and I'm not sure a lot of the students know what a capstone is. And I think it's something unique that we offer. Now we currently only have IS and T students in here who would be going through a capstone. So if, you know, Wilson, if you want to explain what the capstone is and provide your example, and then maybe Rose, if you could talk about what the computer science one is alternatively, that would be really helpful. Yeah, so for the ISNT capstone, it's what you have to complete in order to graduate. It's the last two major courses in our uh, degree. And so you get paired up with a, a client that is either a part of a temple institution or uh, an associated in organization. And you have to solve um, a problem for them, a technical problem. Uh, so for my client, I'm working with the Lenfest North Greater Philadelphia Workforce Initiative, where they help 
give jobs to people in the area. And they're working with the Philadelphia Housing Authority service that they're going to provide with health workers going to residents of the Philadelphia Housing Authority and providing them information about COVID-19 and checking in on them to see if everything's okay, if they need services. So we're helping them with a by building a web app to keep track of all of the interactions their workers have with these residents and uh, hopefully make an impact that way. Yeah, and Jose went through, uh, he also did a project for LendFest as well. So um, they've been a repeated client for us, which is really nice. Um, the, the key to the capstone is to really give you real world experience while you're still here so that going into the professional world, the transition is easier, right? You, you will be able to relate experiences and opportunities that you've done within the capstone to what will happen in real life when you graduate. And it's working in a team and it's the important skill sets that employers want. And this is the same for your CS capstone or your ISNT capstone. And the really other thing that it gives you is the things to talk about in an interview, right? Because that's the thing that most people are most nervous about is, is what do I say in an interview? I don't know enough. But the capstone gives you the opportunity to be able to communicate about your experiences, working in a team, producing professional documents, solving problems, collaboration, professionalism. And, and it just, it gives you that conversation, which will be very useful for you when you go through these interview processes. The CS capstone is slightly different because the student skill sets are slightly different. They focus on um, more, it's a one semester course for them. And they focus more on what I would call not um, more systems engineering type projects. So they work with robotics and microchips and um, uh, cloud computing and uh, network performance and things of that, where the ISNT capstone tends to be more oriented towards a client. Um, but the experiences are the same, the opportunities are the same, and, and it's just great experience. Thank you for sharing. Um, I actually just got a great question um, in the chat from a student. Um, so this student said, um, hello, I'm very interested in public policy. Would minoring in a humanities subject work with computer science? Um, I don't wanna rely on Wilson too much. It's only just because I know that he has a minor outside of computer science. Um, but the, do any of the other students have minors outside of CST? Um, if not, Wilson can jump in and, and maybe some of the professors can jump in. I heard Dassey mentioned music tech earlier. I don't know if she wants to talk about that. Um, so it would be a certificate in music technology. Um, I don't, I don't know if they have a, I don't think they have a minor. So that's why I would be getting the certificate, but I would just really do that for my own enjoyment. Um, and just to see how I could also like continue that throughout my future and see what Temple has to offer with music technology. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not really familiar with, um, with like, I mean, I'm sure it's going to be different when I do go on person you know that's when i'm planning to take it so I'm, i have access to the equipment uh so i'm really looking forward to that you know the the cool part is is technology is ubiquitous across anything in the world today so if your interest is film production if your interest is covid19 research if your interest is in um social improvements for water quality or social improvements for housing Technology can be used in all of those different areas to really help solve problems. So I, I say, yes, take a minor. Yes, follow your passion, combine things together because the really cool part about technology is it, it's multifaceted and you can go into any kind of organization anywhere and be able to make a difference um, in technology. And I think that's one of the cool things about these projects we've worked on is when we go into organizations in the North Philadelphia community, we see that with just a small amount of consulting and guidance and solutions, you know, what kind of a major impact we can make. So I, I highly recommend follow your dreams and your passion and let technology be your um, force for making change. That's extremely well said. Yeah, just adding from uh, the, the side of what I usually tell students, because a lot of students will ask about um, 
adding a minor or different things. So as Dossie said, you can absolutely add, you know, something, or add, as Rose said too, you can add something that you're just flat out passionate about, that you just like to do, you know, it doesn't have to completely make sense with your major. Um, but the way that um, your, your courses work is that um, each semester, you're probably going to be taking, you know, between two to three major courses, one general education course, which are courses that everyone has to take. And then you have a bulk of classes that are uh, in your degree requirements that are just called electives. You can just take really whatever you want. Um, so to create a minor, you usually have to take between five to eight courses and you can take those courses in anything. I think that's one of the great things about Temple is that we have so many amazing courses and majors to choose from. We have over 150 different majors. Um, so you could take courses within any of those. Um, I always say, you know, I have ambassadors who took electives in yoga and rock climbing but Wilson has a French minor. I know a lot of students who do Spanish minors. Um, public policy, you could definitely do. So yes, uh, Temple is your oyster um, in that sense. Um, so I, Jose, uh, you teased us a little bit saying, you know, I'll share my story a little bit later. So how about now? How does okay. now sound? <laughs> okay. So so guys, so my story, um, as stated before, you know, I stem from an urban, the urban environment of North Philadelphia. You know, I come from um, public education system. Uh, which was not that great. Therefore, when I first arrived on the university scene, um, it was a bit challenging when it when it came to my academics. I always felt as as if I was playing um, catch up. And um, also met, also meant also to mention, um, I am a first generation um, college student, so nobody in my family uh, went to college. Uh, I don't have a lot of friends that graduated from college, so I almost felt like as if I was on my own. Um, but another, another, nonetheless, um, Temple and the CIS de department in particular offers a lot of resources, um, such as the student professional development and tutoring, um, in which I use to my advantage and that you can also use to your advantage. Um, now that I, you know, finished and graduate, I can reminisce on all those long nights I'm writing papers, all those long nights that I was coding, you know, times where... I uh, had to self-evaluate myself like, oh man, like, I don't know if, if I'm gonna be able to get through this, you know, uh, couple couple failed classes. There was times where um, I had to repeat classes, um, the math courses in particular. Uh, so math wasn't really my thing, but I never let that um, diminish my drive, you know, in, in order to get that degree, in order to be the first one in my family um, uh, to do it. Um, yeah, so now um, after graduating, you know, uh, a month and a half later, I was able to obtain a job at Wells Fargo for the technology department. Um, and I was also working part time while while I was a student. So so being able to increase my wage, tripling my wage that I was, you know, part time working to, you know, now to be able to make a, a comfortable amount being able to move to Charlotte, North Carolina, um, have my own apartment, being able to, you know, uh, obtain those things that um, I, I thought about, but wasn't really there. You know, I didn't really see these types of stuff. Um, it, it goes to show that, you know, the degree was definitely worth it. All the stress, all the anxiety, all those long nights was, it, it was worth it. And, um, and if I could do it guys, you guys could definitely do it. Just know that uh, Temple University and uh, the CIS department in particular has your back. Um, I remember my junior year, um, I knew that my graduation time was coming. So I made sure that I uh, went to Rose McGinnis office to let her know my story, um, to let her know that I know I'm, I'm gonna need help, you know, uh, uh, landing, uh, landing a job and man, she was able to help me instantly. She was like, okay, first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna fix up your resume. Next thing you gotta do this, you gotta get your GPA up and um, you gotta get an internship. And ever since that, she was able to just guide me, able to uh, refer, refer employers to me, um, uh, refer me to employers. And because of Rose McGinnis and because of the student professional development um, a sector, I was able to, you know, uh, land, I was able to start my career. So I just wanted to share that with you guys and I wish you guys nothing but the best. 
Thank you so much, Jose, for sharing that story. And, you know, CIS had your back and they helped you with all these things, but you did that, you know, you persevered, you did all of that. So thank you for sharing them. We're so happy to have you here tonight. Um, that was really powerful um, and congratulations. Um, so please um, ask any final, final questions in the chat as we're gonna wrap up tonight, let you get back to, you know, maybe transferring from this medium sized screen to the big screen of a TV. Um, but um, let's just wrap up if, if, if all the panelists or all the students rather, the current students, if, if you could just give a piece of advice, you know, if uh, to these students that, you know, some of them or most of them are probably still trying to decide where they want to attend and you have to do it through a computer screen these days, though we are opening up for campus tours if you want to come. Um, if you just want to share, you know, a piece of advice for making their decision, um, that would be a great way to end. So um, I don't know who wants to go first, um, but if you feel moved, you can go first. I got, I got a piece of advice I could leave. Um, uh, one advice would be, don't be uh, afraid to network, you know, to make friends within, you know, um, your major. Um, that turned out to be a, a real helping component for me, you know, being able to, um, you know, by my, by my junior and senior year, being able to have that the, that the network of people that I see, I see class at course after course after course after course, and you know, be able to collaborate with them was a uh, extremely uh, helpful resource. So yeah, guys, don't be, you know, it may be a little bit more challenging um, now virtually to, you know, to network and uh, make friends, but nonetheless, don't be afraid to make friends. Um, and yeah, and just use, use, use that to your advantage. Yeah, one of the most important things I got from Jose's like really powerful story was that he wasn't afraid to ask for help when he knew he needed it. So he went and used all the resources available to him um, to not, and not just like stayed silent. So that's really my piece of advice. Um, don't suffer in silence, go get help. And like Jose said, networking is everything in this field. Yeah, I'm a freshman and um, I made friends with a few kids from my calculus class and they, one of them happened to be like the president of ACM and the vice president of STARS. So <laughs> immediately he just introduced me to the whole, um, the whole atmosphere and he was very welcoming and everyone else was welcoming as well in the clubs. So it just brought me um, to the, it just invited me to the whole community that Temple has to offer within CST. Um, and also another piece of advice is to always um, maintain perspective understand that like you won't always know what you are doing just continue doing what you're doing prioritize your health um, take it easy reach out to people if they can help you they definitely can um, and yeah and just relax just breathe um, it's COVID time now it's hard for everyone but you got this <laughs> One piece of advice that I would give is that um, it's okay not to know exactly what you want to do 20 years from now, you know. Um, I actually had a completely different major when I came to Temple and I switched in my freshman year. And, you know, I feel like a lot of the times um, when we're seniors in high school, we're always pushed to choose our major, choose our major, know what you want to do. And honestly, when you get to college, you're going to meet so many people who really don't know what they want to do for their career. Even now, even as seniors, I ask people and they're like, hmm, maybe this, but also this. So there's just explore your opportunities and really reach out to people. If you have questions about a certain major, reach out to them, reach out to students, reach out to advisors, reach, reach out to professors and really explore your opportunities and never think that it's too late to change. And yeah, that's my advice. <laughs> Um, for me, going off of what Rose said, I was the same. I came in as a business major and then switched to computer science. Um, so it really is okay not to know. Sometimes when you're in the moment, it's really hard to forget that you're that everyone else is with you. You kind of feel alone in the situation, but it's really important to remember that if you're feeling a certain way, I'm almost can guarantee that someone else is feeling the exact same way, whether it's, I don't know what's going on in class, whether it's, I don't know what to major in or where to live or something like that. Someone else is experiencing the same thing. So piggybacking off of what everyone said, some of my greatest support system come from my classes. You know, definitely talk to whoever you can, 
everyone and anyone um talk to your professors i have some of the greatest relationships with my professors and they help you out in the long run um and you get to make those great connections and you look out for each other in that sense so i would definitely say the biggest thing would to be to meet anyone meet everyone and just to remember you're not alone in this everyone's going through the same thing and it's big and it's scary but you can do it you just have to take it day by day week by week year by year and you'll find something that you enjoy don't be afraid of not knowing because there's something out there that will fit you um and as rose said i'm a junior now and i found out about a new career path this summer so you know you're finding new things all the time um thanks so much guys um i want to answer and danny had to go to her next meeting but i had the one of the students asked a question have any of you guys done study abroad or are planning to do study abroad I was supposed to, but mine got canceled because of yeah, COVID. I, yeah, I was thinking that. So, yep. so for the student who asked the question, um, study abroad last year was very tricky <laughs> um, due to restrictions. So I'm um, probably no one in this has studied abroad, but study abroad, first off, I would tell you, if you can do it, if you can swing it financially, emotionally, socially, and academically, absolutely do study abroad. Hands down, I, if I was a student, I'd go back and study abroad. Um, and I've had children of my own who've gone to college and yeah, study abroad. Um, and our major is such that you won't have any problem studying abroad. Um, our major is such that all of our, most of our first two year classes are offered every single semester with multiple sections. Um, we're also, we also offer courses online. So if you really need to take something, you can, you can stick with it. So study abroad, absolutely. Highly recommend you do it. Temple has amazing study abroad resources, like amazing. We have a campus in Rome, we have a campus in Japan, we have affiliations with hundreds of study abroad programs. So yes, you can study abroad and you can even probably study abroad taking computer science classes in another country. And there are also oh, yeah. scholarships as well. Yes, there are so study abroad lot scholarships. Foundations for scholarships for study abroad. So I know yep. that there are lots of scholarships. And uh, one of our students is, is in Tokyo this semester. As you yes. know. Uh, uh, Claudia, I was just about to bring that up. So, oh, okay. Um... <laughs> I'm sorry. And we've, no, we've, you're also, fine. we've also had CS students who studied abroad and done internships abroad. Yep. Now that's pretty cool. Yeah. I, I uh, in fact, I, uh, Elizabeth knows this because uh, we, we actually met about this very recently. And um, I actually studied abroad myself. And that's why I, I mirror what Rose says, 100% study abroad, find a way to do it. Absolutely. I didn't have the money and I still got to do it. And the, uh, the fun fact I like to say is that the, I studied abroad in Dublin and London. First day I had in London was the first day of the Summer Olympics. Did not plan it that way, but it was an amazing opportunity. And so um, you can work with your advisor. You, you need to work with your advisors in order to set up those plans because it can be a little tricky with the CIS courses. If you wait until later, those things aren't offered abroad, but we can work around them, especially if you plan in an advance. And again, we have a student who is, who we have a student who wants to do their, their um, final capstone course they're doing research abroad and doing internships abroad. And so it's absolutely 100% possible. Okay, I have to wrap us up because Danny needs to start her next Zoom for the chemistry department and she can't unzoom us. She can't zoom them until she unzooms us. The technology today is just amazing. So, yeah. so I am putting my email address in the chat um, all of the students who are participating tonight will be happy to reach out to you to answer any questions. You can send me a question. Um, we would be happy to answer them. Danny will follow up with anyone. So I, I wanna say good night or good evening to all of you. I wanna thank all the students and the faculty who so willingly gave up their time tonight. I wanna thank our admitted students. We all hope to see you in September. Open office hours means come and say hello. Um, so we hope to see you all. And um, again, please feel free to ask any questions you have. Send me an email, send Danny an email. We'll make sure we get you answers, okay? All right, I hope you found this informative um, and uh, have a good evening. Bye-bye, everybody. I put my email also in there. Yep. Thank you. Have a good night. Yeah. Bye, everyone.